What's going on? Coach Luca here with Coach Kelsey. And what we want to talk about right now is actually something that's very important when it comes to training, okay? So think about this. Do you do overhead presses? A lot of people do, okay? Now, many people shouldn't do them yet, okay? Yet. So one, I want to keep your shoulders safe and we want to help you keep your low back safe too. So this is what we're going to do first. We're going to start off with a, something called an overhead flexion test that determines if you should be doing overhead pressing of any type, barbells, kettlebells, dumbbells, right? uh, uh, bands, any of that stuff. And Kelsey's gonna be the culprit. So, <laughs> so we're gonna go with her doing an overhead flexion test and I'm gonna, we're gonna kind of show some like bad results if you get them, bad meaning like you can't go overhead yet. And then we're gonna give you some drills that you can do to improve, I would say, your, your shoulder mobility, stability, uh, and how you would progress this to be able to go to, um, to eventually overhead press. Because the goal is to be able to do it safely. All right, so what we're gonna do is gonna start Kelsey up against the wall. So butt's gonna be up against the wall, feet a little bit away from the wall. So your butt, your upper back, and the back of your head should be able to, to touch the wall. And I shouldn't be able to slide my hand too much. There you go, that's pretty good. There we go. Now, from here, I want you to not just straight up, almost like in a little bit of a wide position, keep those elbows locked out and go thumbs up to the wall if you can. Good, there we go. So turning them this way. Now she does a pretty good job with this, but then we're gonna add one more thing. You're gonna exhale as hard as you can. So, okay, so stay, stay up there. So think about staying up there, but now in that position, exhale. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, now Kelsey does a pretty damn good job with this, okay? So she still has that nice position and she can still touch and keep the elbows locked out, okay? So she would pass an overhead flexion test to be able to do overhead pressing, okay? Now, I'm gonna fake a couple of results that you're gonna see a lot of, okay, when you're doing it. So, a couple of things that usually tend to happen is that people actually start with a big arch. That's why I'm like, hey, if I put my hand behind the low back, you gotta be able to be almost flat against the wall, okay? From here, once I go up for a lot of people, they will get their head forward and be able to touch. But if they get their head back, they cannot touch, okay? Or the other thing that you'll see is the elbows bend, okay? So if I don't have enough overhead flexion, I'm gonna bend my elbows and like, okay, cool, now I can get it. Okay, that doesn't count. You have to have locked out elbows, long arms, thumbs to the wall. Now, the other thing is, the reason I said uh, exhale is because for most people when they go overhead, they'll arch their back and their rib cage will flare. So when I'm here, once people breathe out, sometimes you'll see their hands come off or once again, their uh, head comes off. Okay, so you have to be able to low back, upper back, thumbs, back of the head, rib cage down. Okay, it, with locked out elbow. Okay, so if I pass this, then I can probably use certain variations to do it. Now, at our, at our gym, eight out of 10 people do not pass this, okay? And if you're now adding a bar, so think about this, you can't in a healthy way get overhead, but now you're adding a barbell. So one of two things are gonna happen. To get overhead, you're gonna have to arch, which is gonna bang up your low back. Okay, or you won't be able to finish overhead and it's gonna really stress the shoulder, right? Cause now all the weight's pulling you down. You have to resist it here. No way, bueno. okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take you through some quick drills that we can do to improve our mobility. Now, we kind of went down the road of mobility quite a bit, okay? So we're gonna just do three to four, not to say there's not more drills. I'm just gonna give you guys three to four different drills. And then with Kelsey, I'm gonna take her through kind of a progression of what to work on in the gym or even at home to be able to start getting there and what are some basically other exercises. So I'm gonna grab a quick foam roller out here, steal one. Let's see what we got. Okay, so number one that we're gonna do is you have to work on what's called your upper back thoracic extension. So if you're locked in to this position, and you can't extend your spine, now it's gonna be hard to get overhead. So do this drill at home, okay? Round over, push your head forward, and then get your arms as high as you possibly can. This is, this is the far, as far as I can get them, okay? But now watch this, if I get my neck back, 
now I'm good. Right, so the posture that we live in here prevents us from being able to go overhead healthily. So having a foam roller, imagine going to like mid back, starting right around here. And what we're gonna do is keep our abs braced, chin pack, this is important. You don't wanna have a forward head posture. Chin pack, and then we're going to bend over just that area. So key thing here is keep the abs braced so that your ribs don't flare up. And I'm gonna just do 10 reps over that part of the spine, okay? So once I do my 10 reps, I'm gonna go a little bit higher, and again, keep that chin pack. And I'm literally trying to curve the roller around those vertebrae, right? Hit my 10 reps and come back up again. So it should be about three different spots, right? And some of them will be really subtle, like you're not gonna get a lot of movement, but you just do your best, okay? And if you do that daily, I promise you, you're gonna start getting more range of motion and you'll have better thoracic extension, okay? Number two, we just did the, this one with Kelsey, I'm gonna run through it a little bit faster, is our shoulder cars, right? So where I'm gonna go overhead as far as I can and then I'm gonna try to draw a circle, turning my hand in and all the way around, okay? And I'm gonna go back. So notice my whole trunk doesn't move, I'm moving from my shoulder. Okay, that's drill number two, okay? Drill number three is I'm gonna try to get thoracic rotation. So I'm gonna plant my feet, squeeze my butt, point my thumbs into my chest, and exhale as I rotate as far to the side as I can, other side. Okay, so notice my hips are square, I'm just trying to move from my upper back, okay? So that's exercise number three, okay? Number four, we gotta get our shoulder blades to move, okay? So our shoulder blades are connected to our shoulders. So if we have tight shoulder blades, stiff, shoulder's gonna get beat up. So we're gonna bring our arms out, abs engage, butt engage, drive shoulder blades forward, up, back, down. Like we're kinda drawing a square. And you gotta make sure it's all moving from the shoulder blades. Okay, so imagine doing those drills for about five to 10 reps each side. This one, like I said, three sets of 10 different positions on a daily basis, okay? There's other drills too, but those are a great start. Now, how do we now program, you know, improving that overhead position? So, first things first. Now, if you were at the gym, I'm gonna have Kelsey sit down on the ground. So if you were at the gym, this could be a lap pull down machine. This could be a lot of different uh, things like cable machine. But what we're gonna do is I'm going to bring this band down, like and bring, uh, grab it high enough to where it's some, there's some tension, quite a bit of tension, good. Now, slide in a little bit, good. And actually bend your knees just a bit like, like that, good. Now bring your kind of pelvis under, rib cage down, good. Now she's gonna kind of pull this back and get further forward, bam. So now she's in an overhead position, she's pulling that, band a little bit so it's just creating some tension and now we're going to just exhale so imagine breathe out fully good and then inhale deep into your belly and again good when you inhale do you feel a big last stretch here yeah. so she's right now in an overhead position but she's safe her low back is nice and flat her abs are on she's creating some tension so she's training herself to being in this position. And I like the breathing part, right? So she's got a chin, chin tuck. She's gonna exhale, inhale deep into her belly. And I like to do that for eight reps. So it takes like 30, 40 seconds. And then that's your step and break, right? Now, like I said, you can yeah, smack that joint, <laughs> right? So here, we're just using a band because that's what we got. And you can do that, it works great. If you were at the gym, you could have a neutral, uh, I would say, lap pull down machine, create some tension, right? There's a lot of different things that you can do on that one. And what's great about it is it can loosen you up too, especially if you do the breathing drills because it turns your abs on. So now I got that good position that we talked about, right? And we're kind of pulling a little bit, creating some tension and being able to be safe in that position, right? Because if we give her dumbbells and she was super tight, now you're not safe, right? You don't want that stability. Now here we have stability. Number two drill that you can also do to progress, we're gonna go with this pullover position, okay? So, so Kelsey's gonna lay down on the ground, on her butt, bent knees, and she's gonna kind of grab the bell 
by the handles just like that. And start off with just laying down and pressing it up like a bench press or bringing those knees in. Now, I, wanna, I want her to push that low back into the ground, press this up. Now she's gonna exhale super hard and basically pull over and keep those arms locked out and try to touch the ground with that belt. Keep going, good. Stay long arms, long arms, long arms, and back up. Good. There we go. So she has a really good position now on the ground, but if you look at that bottom position, it's like she's in an overhead press, right? So again, you're gonna exhale super, super hard. Let it pull you. Keep exhaling. Good position, and back up. Good, let's go one more. Breathe out, rib cage. So we breathe out so the rib cage stays down. And coming back up, and break. And breathe in. And the thing is, so maybe for like to do eight to 10 reps of that, maybe a lighter weight would actually be good for you there. But you knocked it out with, with precision, right? So the cool thing about it is, like what did you feel when, when you were going overhead? I mean, my abs were super tight, yeah. You feel your lats on there too? Yeah, my lats too. So basically, you know, once again, if we kind of stood her up, like if we took a snapshot with a camera and put her up, she would be here, right? Once again, we're, what are we doing? Lat length, core down, right? Good neck position, and we're training the overhead position, right? So we got our band drill, we got our uh, kettlebell pullover, and then number three, we'd start, now we'd go, okay, let's press, but let's not press overhead. Let's do a landmine press or a core trainer press. So Kelsey's gonna go over here, stagger her stance, rib cage down, abs on, elbow out a little bit, and then we're gonna press and reach to work that shoulder blade. Because think about this, if I can't go overhead, but I can get to here, this is actually a safe drill but we're still training. So at the top, I'm gonna press and then I'm gonna lean forward and almost be in that overhead position. We'll just have you do like five reps on this one. So step back a little bit, good. Hips are aligned, good. Notice her elbow is not falling in, it's out a little bit, so it gives space to the shoulder. So she's gonna press and reach with the shoulder blade. Good, reach, 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 and then control back down. So you can see this angle here, it's not completely overhead, but then when she goes forward, now you got that nice line overhead and she's in a healthy position. So drive and reach. Good. Let's go two more. Good, and we want to see that shoulder blade upwardly rotate, right? So we want to see that drive and upwardly rotate and back down. Nice. That's, that's a healthy movement of the shoulder. And you'll see a lot of people that overhead, you know, they'll get pain this won't give them pain, okay? From there, the first thing that we do before we actually press is go with the overhead walk. So I'm gonna have, let's see, uh, this lovely pink one, right? Just for, so there, there's two variations, right? One is the bottoms up position, which we did earlier, uh, but we're just gonna have her do a regular position like pressing overhead or, or push pressing overhead, locking it in, rib cage down, and we're just gonna walk around. All right, so I'll just have you go down there and back, not too crazy, because now we don't have to worry about the press position yet, we're just worrying about the stability here. So I wanna keep it in line with the ear, abs down, good. Keep those knuckles up. So she's still in that overhead position, she's working her core, she's working that stability, but she doesn't have to worry about pressing yet, okay? And break. All right, so imagine progressing those to where, for instance, like we've had a lot of people that come in, you know, they're over here, and in like eight to 12 weeks, they're overhead and we can start doing some of these pressing variations in a healthy way. The cool thing about it is like, what, you know, what do you do apart from these things that we talked about if you can't press overhead yet? Well, we got the landmine press we just showed. You know, pullover is an actual drill that we can do, but you can do incline dumbbell bench presses. You can do cable presses in different positions, right? We can do some overhead walks. There's a ton of different things that we can do floor presses. We can do, you, know, you name it, right? There's a lot of stuff that, that can happen that we can rotate in before you're able to go overhead. Remember, if you can't pass overhead flexion test, don't press overhead yet and work on the things that we just showed you. All right, put them into play. Let us know how you do.